Xenia, Ohio, after a devastating tornado, almost seems locked into a hellish period where job prospects and aspirations are below zero, as teenagers waste time killing cats to sell to the local convenience store for some quick cash, pissing off the overpass onto the cars below and huffing glue, reminiscing about people who moved out of town to better horizons, likely due to the lack of acceptance found within the true small town mentality. This is how many Corinne's anxiety in Producing Gummo, a polarising film with a dedicated reputation for its mixture of disturbing content, and also for Corinne's distinct observation and humour. Gummo isn't quite a comedy, but how many Corinne's morbidly laced sense of humour is apparent in scenes that are highlights of the absurdities in white trash Americana. Two young boys dressed as cowboys shoot cap guns at a boy dressed in bunny ears, screaming about how he stinks of ass and piss before they rob him. It's the cowboy roleplay of playgrounds taking to its extreme, verging on abusive. A young teen kills cats by lacing tuna with glass to sell their carcasses for extra cash to support his dying grandmother. A contrast between the horrific action of animal cruelty with the action of selflessness in aiding his unwell grandmother. A bathtub filled with disgusting water becoming the place where dinner is served. There's an irony in washing oneself with such filthy water and the grotesque dinner is just the icing of the disgusting decaying cake. Gummo isn't a pretty film. Gummo is often vulgar and clearly aims to distress and offend viewers. In this manner it is clearly effective. Gummo is often considered a disturbing film for a reason, not solely due to its scenes being gruesome in nature, but also because Gummo is like a sensory bombardment. Home video footage of young adults bragging about setting cats alight, eerie voiceovers detailing molestations, muggings and death, as well as the mixture of black metal, dark ambient and ironically used pop song classics on the film soundtrack, Gummo aims to be overwhelming, and it succeeds, capturing a sense of moralistic decay within a poverty-stricken community, within a series of vignettes, and a loose narrative focusing on two young teenagers, Tumblr and Solomon, as they make money collecting dead cats. Gummo captures a world that feels extreme, yet believable, with a lack of opportunities for this community. They fulfil their time with anything that comes to mind, from the instant gratification of glue sniffing, to the showcase of one's own supposed strength by drunkenly wrestling with a chair. While plenty of the actions portrayed within Gummo are horrendous, not everybody here is a bad person. Three sisters who lose their cat, peculiarly named Foot Foot, stick together like glue and demonstrate a kindness towards each other, as well as a trust in the people around them. This unfortunately means they are taken advantage of, as a man offers to find their cat with them, but in actuality he attempts to sexually assault one of the sisters, while the characters in Gummo might might not all be maliciously inclined with self-serving ulterior motives. Within the world of Gummo, those kind of characters are likely to become victims of disturbing fates. This is reinforced via the diagnosis of breast cancer for a young woman. During her time in a junkyard, making out with another teenager, he tells her she has a lump in her breast. Towards Gummo's conclusion, the worst is confirmed, the young woman providing an upsetting monologue regarding how the amputation of her breast will hurt her chances for love in the future. It's likely such an upsetting monologue because it voices a genuine concern for breast cancer survivors. Will future partners turn away? It's this sense of isolation and alienation that surviving an awful ordeal could create more distance between her and other people that makes this scene so challenging to watch. It's bitterly poignant and demonstrates that any glimmer of hope found in Gummo is ready to be stomped on and murdered. The reason that any sense of light is destroyed in Gummo is that Corinne's film aims to capture decay in all its forms, the rotting carcasses of cats, the moralistic decay in the cruel and exploitative actions of characters within the film, the decay of thought when time is killed via aggressive fistfights dealt with a smile or by drunken arm wrestling. Decay is everywhere in Gummo and the fact that Gummo feels as disturbing and resonant as it does is because Gummo feels authentic. Those having grown up in small towns, having moved out, may know people who have never stepped foot outside of that town. There is a sense sense of believability in Gummo that is uncomfortable to confront, and yet the film is uncompromising, making us accept that if Gummo is authentic, then decay isn't just in Gummo, decay is everywhere. In conclusion, Harmony Corinne's Gummo is a challenging experimental drama that captures an authentic sense of decay and hopelessness within a landscape that offers nothing in terms of opportunities or aspirations. Darkly comic at times, horrific at others, the testimony of a young woman suffering of sexual assault at the hands of her own 
grandfather is chilling. There's something about Gummo that makes it impossible not to think of once having seen it, cementing Harmony Crin as an influential and cult figure within art house cinema. Thank you.